Hey, what's going on, guys? So, I just made this entire video, 14 minutes long, and my mic was muted. So, anyway, that, that sucked. But, uh, well, I guess we're going to make it again, this time better. But, today we're going to be talking about how you're going to join the military if you wanted to. So, what, what all the steps are and how it works. So, first step. Airforce.com. Go to the top of the link that says I like, contact your recruiter. Click it, type in your zip code, and then it'll show local recruiters. Um, find your recruiter, call him, set up an appointment. Uh, basically, you'll just call him up, he'll, he'll ask you a couple questions. Just say, I'm interested in joining the Air Force. He'll say, Okay, um, how old are you? Are you single, married? What's your height, weight? what's your drug and alcohol, do you have any tattoos, blah, blah, blah. And it's just basically to make sure that you're pre-qualified, you know, before he gets in too much in depth. He just wants to make sure that you're not wasting his time coming down and then figure out that you have some kind of medical issue that that disqualifies you from the Air Force. Anyway, um, so yeah, set up your appointment. You go down there, and he gives you a piece of paper. You fill it out, just basically says that you're, that you're there, and he gives you gives him all of your information just in case something he needs to contact you or whatever and then uh, then you go take the practice ASVAB if you don't know what the ASVAB is it's basically what the military uses to qualify you um, with the, with your jobs so say like uh, you know being a ditch digger compared to being a dentist you know there's a different uh, there's a different you need a different score a uh, higher score to be a dentist than you do to be a ditch digger kind of deal you know what I mean so you just basically take this test and it just gets you your general score and then that'll qualify you for whatever job um, the minimum score it's scored between 0 to 99 the minimum score for the Air Force is 50 so you gotta make a 50 or above and for army for different branches it's it's lower so I mean if you don't make the 50 and you don't want to study and try to get better then just you can switch it up go to a different branch um, but if you do score lower or you do score higher and you still want to just improve your score, I highly recommend go get the book ASVAB for Dummies. ASVAB for Dummies. It is uh, pretty good. I used it and I jumped up 12 points, or 13 points. And I only studied like four times for like an hour a piece. And so it's a pretty good gig. Uh, go get that book. It's like 10, uh, 10 20 bucks. I don't know. It's worth it though if you get a good job, you know what I mean? So, uh, what's after that? You take your practice ASVAB, then you sit down with your recruiter and you, he answers any of your questions, just kind of like I'm doing now. You know, well, what, what comes after this? What, you know, you just talk to him. You can ask him how his day is going, whatever. Um, after that, he'll go ahead and he'll schedule, schedule you a trip to the MEPS. And so what you're gonna do is, you're going to go down to MEPS and you're going to take your ASVAB test, your real ASVAB. The first one was a practice just to see that you actually could qualify so they don't send you down and waste resources kind of deal. So send you down and uh, you'll take your ASVAB. Whatever you get is whatever you get, you know. Um, then they'll send you to a hotel or at least they sent me to a hotel. And I spent the night there, and then in the morning, about 4 in the morning, they woke us up, had breakfast, and we went down to MEPS. We were down at MEPS when they opened at like 5.30, 6. And so we're down there, and they had, there's about 100 of us. We're all joined in different branches, and they had us in to do the physical, and the physical portion of the, of the MEPS experience. And so what they basically did was they did optometry, they did um, your hearing, they did... They did blood test, piss test, uh, they checked your body, you had to do like a duck walk, they checked your spine, checked, made sure you're all good to go, did height and weight again. Um, for some people who are going in for like, for thinking they're going to do like combat jobs, they had like this push-up bar thing. It's, uh, you'll see it when you get there, I, you know, I have no clue how to explain it. Um, you also do like this whole tattoo thing, they, you tell them all about your tattoos and, and uh, tell them about any previous medical conditions you had and whatever and that's where you just go through and you see what's what's going on um that part kinda sucks because it takes a long time because there's a hundred people but you'll get through it and it'll be okay 
And then after that, you go back to your recruiter and you just tell them, yep, I went through MEPS, it's all good to go. And, oh, oh I'm sorry, I skipped something. Um, after your medical, you go in and you talk to your office. So your branch, it, there's four different branches, or five because Coast Guard, and you have your different office and you go in there and basically you just talk to your dude, to the guy there, the Air Force guy, and he'll have give you like this six page, six pages of uh, jobs. You just look through them, and you can. That's where you pick if you want to be mechanical, administrative, whatever, whatever. And uh, you so you pick. Okay, I want to be, I want to be electrical at this point. So you say okay, and at that point, that six pages of jobs gets cut by seventy five percent because you cut out the other three. So now you're just looking at pretty much one and a half pages and it's just all electrical jobs and then you put down six you put down six electrical jobs and then you put down the open electrical open electrical you have to have it down there um, that basically means you go into basic and you don't know what your job is and you actually get your you get your job uh, seventh week of basic and it'll be it it's guaranteed that it'll be in the electrical career field but you don't know what it'll be. It might be better or worse. For me, it was pretty good. So I went in open mechanical. So um, any hoozle. Then you uh, you sign your contract, just saying that okay, yep, these are these are the six or the seven jobs I want to lock in. Boom, I'm locked in, locking them in. Go talk to your recruiter, and that's where you can tell them, hey man, I I really want to be this. I want to be an electrician. So hook me up with this, that's what I really want. If you have the other five come in, I don't really want them, so don't even try to talk to me, or whatever. And he'll be like, okay, man, sounds good. And he'll call you up whenever he gets a job. If he says something like, hey, man, I got open electrical, and you don't want open electrical, you could say, okay, well, give it to somebody else. I don't want that. I want electrician. And he'll say, what? Are you sure? You know, and it'll kind of piss him off because he just wants to get you out of here quick. You know, if once he ships you off to basic, you're not his problem anymore kind of deal. You know, he don't look at recruiters as being bad people. I mean, my recruiter was awesome, but that's really how it goes. You know, if he has something in his heart that makes him want to help you more than just sending you off, then whatever. But if he doesn't, don't let that, um, don't let him take advantage of you. Okay, you're your own person. You can make your own decisions. Uh, just tell him, no, I want to be an electrician in the Air Force. So I'll wait as long as it takes. And then eventually he'll give you the phone call. Okay, we got your electrician job. Come on down, and you go on down to the to the office and uh, sit down. You have your contract. You have your ship date on there. This is where you f fill out a bunch of paperwork. Um, somewhere in between this time, between the time from MEPS and the job, you'll be contacted by a security clearance guy, and you'll come down and you'll go over all your criminal records and make give you security clearance pretty much okay anyway uh, so you get the job you sign the contract and at that point you get enrolled in the debt program debt program is basically for me what I had to do was uh, it's delayed entry program what I had to do was every Saturday we met up at this park and we just went up um, or it wasn't every Saturday every first Saturday of the month went to this park and we just hung out and uh, he basically told us any up to date any information we had to sign like different sexual awareness waivers that just came out and you know he basically just gathered up all his people who are waiting to get a job and uh, just talked to us all at once so we did that and then he also shot us text messages like every Monday saying hey have you done any DUI or have you gotten any speeding tickets are you still good joining the Air Force yeah cool and you just basically wait until you get your job. You get your job, go down, sign it. Uh, I just backtracked. Um, but, yep, you just keep waiting, keep waiting until your ship date. And then once your ship date comes, you go, you'll, you'll meet with your recruiter for like a 30 day bef prior to, to going. And he just tells you what it'll be like, what you have to pack. And you go in for 15 day, and then you go in for like a three day. And he basically says goodbye to you, tells you what to do. And then you go down to... Uh, the hotel and then you go to MEPS the final time and you have all your stuff with you and you have your family with you and you're down there and you're just just there to leave 
it takes like six hours or something like that to go through you go office to office to office to office getting all your paperwork figured out getting all your stuff locked in and they'll try to convince you at this time to do either four or six years and they want you to do six because it saves them money but this is where you got to decide if you want to really do that um, six years I mean you do get E3 as soon as you join so if you're planning on joining as an E1 and you don't have any college credits nothing like that E3 is a pretty good gig you get paid two hundred dollars extra for uh, per two weeks for the first six months and then after that you get paid a hundred dollars extra for the first year and plus you got a um, you got an extra two stripes on you know a lot of people did take the six-year gig but it's really up to you because that is two years of your life you know um, if you're looking to get a bachelor's degree it's really hard to get a bachelor's degree in four years while you're active duty military but depending on your job it might be a little easier I know my tech school was only two months and that's a really short tech school and people some people have like a year and a half tech school so if you go in four years have a year and a half tech school and you can't do any college during tech school and then you come out you have two years that's only two years you're going to be able to use of uh, tuition assistance so you're not obviously not going to get bachelor's degree you know what I mean um, anyway what's left so you go down there um, finish up all your stuff sign everything and then at that point you swear you swear in with your family and then you say goodbye right after you swear in and then you're officially the United States Air Force's property and they feed you and they they give you a meal meal check and you go go to the airport and you just wait for your plane and you get to buy food or whatever sit I hung out with five different guys when I was there we all flew to Texas together got into Texas um, got down in the airport and as soon as you get there you better throw away all your candy all your food um, whatever you don't want the MTIs to see because that night they're gonna take your shit and they're gonna dump it out on the bed and they're gonna look through all of your stuff make sure you don't have anything bad and then um, you're gonna go from there if you do they're gonna embarrass the crap out of you and they're supposed to make you stressed you know so like me uh, I have a really caring girlfriend so she gave me about a hundred pictures of us and so I had those laid out on the bed and my MTI had to take them and he had to look through every single one of them and there was one where I was shirtless and he took this and he's like and like ripped it and like he made a big deal about it but uh yeah so just don't bring anything embarrassing um if you ha I don't know or hide it in your sock or so I don't know whatever just just be aware anyway you get down there and you'll sign this this check-in sheet and meanwhile while you're doing this there's some civilian guy just yelling at you telling you to look forward not to laugh not to smile not to do nothing and then uh, you bust out of that line and you go into like this flight and there's just a bunch of you standing in this like maybe 40 of you standing in these rows lined up and you have all your stuff luggage with you and they're like okay pull out your cell phones call up whoever you want to call tell them you arrived in Texas and that you um, that you, you arrive safely, you're going through basic, and you love them. And that's it, and then hang up. So you got to do that. Psh, that's the last time you get to talk to them for a couple days. And then you're on your way. You go into Lackland Air Force Base. Um, and you go there, and they set you up with your, with your packets, and you do all your paperwork. And then you go into um, another processing thing. You get fed. And uh, then you go into your room or your uh... what the hell do they call it in basic your dorm 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 you go into your dorm with all of your fifty brothers and then you have your first night and that's a fun experience so yep yeah, that's pretty much what you get when you're trying to join uh, that's step by step so now you guys know anyway um, Thanks for checking out my videos. Uh, I've been getting a lot of views recently, a lot of comments, and I, I really like it. I like to help people out. So if you have any more questions or anything like that, go ahead and pop a comment down there, and I'll love to answer it. Um, please like. If I, I like seeing likes on the videos. You know, I take it personally. And uh, subscribe if you guys want to check out more of my videos. I'm going to have new videos coming out every Wednesday. I'm going to try to crank them out every Wednesday, at least once a week. And uh, I'm just here to help you guys out. So. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see, want me to talk about. I think next video will be about basic training, something like that. But, 
yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Um, you guys take it easy. Thanks.